Before we move on to specifics, there are a few terms it's important to understand. First off is interactual distance. That's the distance between the two cameras filming a stereoscopic film. This is often used interchangeably with interocular distance. Technically, interocular distance refers specifically to the distance between the eyes of a human being. This is a fixed amount, on average 65 millimeters. In contrast, Interaxial distance refers specifically to the distance between camera lenses. Now this can be set to 65 millimeters to match average interocular distance in humans, but it can also be adjusted for effect or to accommodate a larger field of view. Just be aware that the terms are often used interchangeably. Oh, and in still photography the interaxial distance is often called the stereo base. Some stereo cinematographers have adopted that terminology, so if you hear someone using it, just know that they're talking about the interaxial separation of the cameras. Next up is the screen plane. That's the point at which two stereo images line up. Any object in front of the screen plane will appear to come out of the screen toward the audience, and any object behind the screen plane will appear to recede into the screen. Since this is such an important idea, it's called by a lot of names. It can often be referred to as the stereo window, or the convergence point or convergence plane, since that's where the stereo pair of images are converged. By the way, we usually refer to objects coming forward of the screen as being in negative space, and objects receding behind the screen as being in positive space. This can be confusing to many people, especially those with a background in 3D animation, where the negative z-axis is usually pointing backwards into the screen. Just know that if a stereoscopic supervisor or director is talking about negative space, they probably mean the space out of screen toward the audience. The distance separating where an object appears in the left and right stereo pairs is called its disparity or parallax. Here we have an image that moves 15 pixels between its position in the left view and its position in the right view. So we can talk about it as having a disparity or parallax of 15 pixels. It's also extremely common to talk parallax percentages. So assuming this is a 1080p HD image, we know that it has a pixel width of 1920 pixels. So what percentage of 1920 is 15 pixels? A simple calculation gives us roughly 0.008% parallax. The benefit of talking in percentages is that you don't need to worry about dealing with proxy formats on the way through. Remember, we have both positive and negative parallax. Negative images, those coming out toward the audience, usually have their parallax percentages denoted by a minus sign. The depth budget of a shot is the total parallax of the shot, taking into account both positive and negative objects in the scene. This is another term with a somewhat loose application. Sometimes depth budget is used to refer to the total 3D space given to an entire sequence, other times it's referring to the total parallax in a single shot. In an effort to avoid confusion, depth bracket is sometimes used to refer specifically to the parallax of a single shot. These are the most common terms you'll come across as you work in 3D. Nonetheless, since the industry is still so new, it doesn't hurt to make sure you're speaking the same language with any collaborators before you start making significant editing decisions on a project. <laughs>